According to Forbes, the book Getting Things Done by David Allen had sold 1.6 million copies by 2014. GTD, as it is often abbreviated, is still one of the most popular productivity methodologies to date. Here's the problem with it it was written 21 years ago. To put things into perspective, a new online collaborative encyclopedia called Wikipedia had just come online. The new social network FaceMash would not be launched for two more years, and Yahoo was about to laughingly refuse to buy this insignificant little search engine called Google. So, using pure GTD today is nostalgic at best and downright inefficient at worst. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about which parts of GTD I salvaged, took and put into Obsidian, and adapted for life in the 21st century. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole van der Hooven, and on this channel, I talk about the different ways that I min-max my life, including digital tools like Obsidian. GTD has its faults, and I'm going to gloss over some of the more archaic things like having 43 physical folders that you rotate every day, and I'm going to focus on three things that I think are worth salvaging. The first is the philosophy. GTD has this philosophy of a mind like water, which is very meditative and monk-like. But the GTD system distinguishes between three distinct phases of information when they come into our lives. The first is capturing, and then comes processing, and then comes actually doing something about that information. If you're nodding along and thinking that it sounds a lot like the Zettelkasten, in a lot of ways it is. That's why I don't really follow a lot of these methodologies strictly, because at some point they tend to converge. But I really like that GTD focus on the fact that having everything captured and thinking of capturing as a separate phase as processing really frees up a lot of your brain power. I think he was the real inventor of the second brain. David Allen's idea was to have a mind that was so empty of irrelevant information that it would flow like water and be able to take the shape of whatever you wanted. The second idea from GTD is the importance of clarifying the next action. See, sometimes we put things like do taxes on our task lists, but that's really vague. And part of the reason that we don't get it done is because subconsciously we resist having to do something that is so abstract. Putting things into actionable next steps really helps me and might help you to actually go and do that. It's always easier to think of things in incremental steps than it is to undertake an entire project. And the third good idea I'm taking from GTD is the concept of regular reviews. Again, not entirely new as a concept. Agile methodologies from software engineering have been espousing this for decades in the form of the retrospective. Now, of these three ideas, I've already made videos about two of them. When it comes to the philosophy of capturing and having a mind like water, check out my video on how I use Readwise to capture everything that I've read or watched or listened to and put the highlights in one place, which is Obsidian. And I've also talked about how I do weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly reviews and goals in my objectives video for 2022. So check that one out as well. Today, I'm going to talk about the one that I haven't mentioned yet, which is task management, or how to clarify next actions from an entire project full of tasks. There are many ways to handle tasks in Obsidian, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it, which is using a plugin, community plugin, called Checklist. So I'm going to quickly install that here in my test vault. I'm going to go to community plugins and I'm going to install and enable checklist. So while we're here, we might as well go into the options for that. By default, checklist is going to use the word to do as like the default keyword. So whenever you use it as a tag, then it knows that you're wanting it to be displayed within ch the checklist plugin. I'm going to say I don't want to show completed tasks and the default is to group tasks by page, but I'm going to change that to tag. I'm going to leave all of these the same. 
So in GTD, there are four different groups or categories that you can decide to organize a bit of information or a task into. And that is inbox, where everything goes. And after you empty the inbox, you then decide whether it goes into one of the remaining three folders, which is next action, waiting for, and someday maybe. Now, next action is filled with, well, the next step of whatever big project you're planning. Waiting for is for those tasks where you are waiting on somebody to do something. So it's not something that you can progress yet, but it is like a reminder for you to go and chase those people if it's been too long and they haven't done whatever it is you are waiting on. And then the last one is someday maybe. This is a kind of blue sky idea where you think it's a cool idea, but you don't necessarily have concrete plans to do it right now, and it may not need to have a next action. Now, if I open the side panel here, you will see a new check mark icon here, and that is the to-do list. We don't have anything in it right now because we don't have any tasks. Here's how you use checklist. First, you type the hash, which is what you would do if you were using a tag. That's because the checklist actually does use tags, but it's a special kind of tag that starts with to do. Then you could have something like to do next action perhaps. And then underneath that you create a task. So that's command enter on a Mac, or you can type out the bullet and then brackets with a space inside them. That's how you make a checkbox. And then you can say, do this thing. And if you've noticed, it's come up over here in the next action section in the checklist plugin. This tag is really important because without it, let's say, let's create a new task. This task won't be in the checklist because we didn't tag it with the special to do keyword. So even if we tagged it with something else, it's not going to show up there because it is specifically looking for that. Now you don't have to set up these tags in advance. You can just use them as long as they start with to do. So what I personally do is I have a to do next action, then I have a to do waiting for, and now that appears here as well. And then you could do a to do someday, maybe, maybe this thing someday. I've done the three different folders here for next action waiting for and someday maybe because I tend to use my daily note as an inbox. You can also have another one for inbox. So to do slash inbox. Um, Rob told me to check out Readwise and that'll show up here as well. You can really change this structure to suit how you like to work. So maybe instead of having the to do next action, you want to distinguish between work tasks and personal tasks. So then you do to do work and then next action and have your work tasks here. And that'll show up under work next action. In the checklist plugin, you can also independently expand and collapse these. And in the settings here, you can select other tags if you're using them. But right now I'm just using to do. And you can also tick off some of these tasks within to do. So you could be on some other page. And by the way, this works to collate things across different pages. So if I go into a different page and I suddenly, while I'm talking to someone, in a meeting, I have an idea of something that I need to do, then I can just do to do next action. And then I'll say, um, Annie wants me to do this thing. Even if I have this closed, I'll know that all of the tasks that are marked in this way are going to show up here. Another aspect in GTD that's related to tasks is context. In GTD, sometimes it's useful to distinguish between next actions that are done as an errand, for example, versus ones that are done at the computer. So I've added computer here and as a task, I'm going to say research more about Mimir. And that's going to show up with all of the subheadings that you've used. Now, if you don't want to use GTD at all, you could still use the same approach and use them like agendas. So if you're talking to somebody, say you're in a meeting with Nico, and while you're talking to Nico, he suddenly says something that you want to remember to bring up with your friend Jonathan, 
then you can type something like to do agenda Jonathan. Ask him about the book he recommended to Nico. And then on the side panel here, you can open up the one for Jonathan when you're talking to Jonathan. I find it really useful because usually you remember things in different contexts and that way I don't have to break my flow of thought. You know, I can just hammer it out and know that it'll still go to the right place and I'll still find it. Now, a cool thing too is that you can have a person page for, let's say for Jonathan. And you can even use a data view query to bring in tasks that you've marked as needing to be on the agenda for the next time you talk to him. For example, you can do data view and then type task from hashtag. You can even select it here on the drop down. I'll just enter that. And when I exit out of that, it'll say that in the page meeting with Nico, I had a task that I assigned with this tag. So that's just going to be constantly updating. So on today's note on the left, I could have something that also is tagged with to do agenda Jonathan and have another task and that will automatically be populated when I open up this Jonathan note. So this is a good way of remembering the things that you need to bring up with people so that when you see them, you already have a list of things that you need to talk to them about. The checklist plugin is how I personally handle the tasks that I put in Obsidian in a pseudo GTD way. But last week I made a video on task management in Obsidian and that was with data view instead. A lot of people prefer that approach because with data view, you get to put the tasks in your notes. Whereas with the checklist approach, you have it in a side panel and some people don't like that. The third approach is to do calendar blocking, which I do use for all of the time and date sensitive tasks. And I use a kind of AI smart calendar blocking system called Reclaim. So check those out. Thank you for watching. Choose the system that works best for you and don't worry about what it's called or any of the terminology. Voila.